After discussing the importance of a training validation test split of our dataset, let's have a look at how to utilize the different subsets correctly. A quick recap, we start with an initial dataset, which we then split into a test set that we keep for later use, and a training and validation set to develop our model. It is important to note that we will continue talking about training and validation sets only, as the different evaluation settings will be used for development and optimization of the model. The test set should be created beforehand and kept untouched for the reasons we discussed in our first video. But how exactly do we create our subsets? A very first thought could be to just take the first 70% of our dataset and make it our training set. Then the next 20% will be our validation set and the last remaining 10% our test set. Sounds good, right? Well, this depends on how the data was originally created. If the dataset has some order built into it, for example, all data points of class A first, then all of class B, and so on, then this approach would not be very good. Why? Because you will leave out some classes from the validation and the test set, and vice versa. Or you could potentially create a training set that does not include all classes, meaning that your model does not see all possible classes at training time. Therefore, the simple approach to split data into three subsets is always to choose at random. This can be done by either shuffling the dataset before taking a split, as explained before, or by just picking random data points until we reach, for example, 70%. Using this random split, we can then start training the machine learning model of our choice. We will then check its performance using the validation set and start optimizing to increase the performance. So far, it seems we're doing everything just fine. But there is one less obvious point to consider. What if we are just lucky with our data split and got the best possible split in terms of training and evaluating? Or what if it is the other way around and we picked a really bad split which our model struggles to learn from the training set? To avoid this potential issue, we will start from the beginning again. And again, multiple times really. But what does this mean? You will now learn about the concept of cross-validation. In our initial data split, we will have one part being training set and another being our validation set. As we only have a single part being validation, we will refer to this as single-fold validation. This already suggests that there can be potentially multiple folds, and this is exactly what we will look at now. In a cross-validation setting, we will start by defining how many folds we want to have. That is, how many different validation subsets do we want. Let's take five folds as an example. We will split the data into five equally sized subsets, with the data points chosen at random, while also trying to have every data point appear in the validation set exactly once. Now, our first setting will take the first four folds as training set, and the last one as validation. We then train the model and evaluate as discussed. Additionally, for our second setting, we will now take the four fold as validation set, and all others as training set. Do you see where this is going? Right, for all of our five different settings, we will change the fold which we use as our validation set and take the rest as training set. After all five models were trained, we can then take the average of the reported performance on the validation sets and report it. Additionally, we can also report the variance across the different fold settings to get a measure of robustness. Similarly to what we did with five folds, we can do the same for k folds where k can be any positive integer. We refer to this method as k-fold cross-validation, where k is the variable that defines how many folds we will create in the process. This method is very useful as we can get a better understanding of whether our model is good in general, or if we just got lucky by selecting good data points for training. A more extreme version of the cross-validation setting is the so-called leave-one-out cross-validation. Here, we are not splitting our dataset into different equally sized folds. For each iteration, we will leave out exactly one data point, which is used as validation data point, and use the rest as training set. This will then be repeated as many times as we have data points available, basically until every data point got to be a validation sample. The leave one out cross-validation definitely goes into way more detail compared to the k-fold cross-validation, but due to its nature, it can become quite unhandy if your dataset is very big. Therefore, k-fold cross-validation is the more popular choice, as it works well with big datasets. But if your dataset is small, then leave one out approach is a very good option as it allows you to use as much data for training as possible.